kind of cool having someone intro me. <laughs> Not used to that. <laughs> now if I can just get someone to carry my computer stand into place, we'll be all set, right? And I need a chair because I run around too much. So, so we've been talking about um, investing, and in particular, we called this this year this Invest 2017. It's a it's a holy investment. It's also when we talk about invest here in Florida, uh, we think about hurricanes. Well, this has been uh, a, 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 an investing in something that is going to be a hurricane. I hope in our in the uh, spiritual sense over the next year. I want to thank you all to start with. I want to thank you for what's happened in 2016. Who would have thought that this campus would have grown not once but twice in the past year? Sue Benton was our primary child giver who uh, died. It'll be four years in January. Um, and she loved this church and she made sure her family knew it and said, when our when my house is ready to be sold, I want the church to have the first first go at it. And because of your thankfulness and because of her uh, investment in us, we were able to purchase that house and, and, and purchase it for a house her price, a price her daughter said was very fair. And that's really cool. Then Judy Ogden, one of our church members who does a lot of finance, walked into the bank across the street one day and basically came out and got us to buy a bank. <laughs> I said, absolutely no way at the start, but with your support and investment in the kingdom, we did it. And we did it at just the right time. Do you realize we would be out of space right now? We would have not enough room for Sunday schools if we hadn't done it just exactly when we did. And so that's God's hand in it. And your investment has paid off in much imp more important ways. This morning at the first service, this was lined with preschoolers singing their Thanksgiving hearts out as, as turkeys and pilgrims and what else do we have? Native Americans, I don't remember what the third was, but they were, they just were s s singing away up here. And that's because of our investment in the kingdom. And, and then our thrift boutique, uh, which is our uh, second, is our s shop down the road about two miles. It expands our reach because you've committed your time to help serve there. Or maybe you've committed by giving your things. And Derbyshire Place is a second campus that we've taken over just to be reaching people, especially children and families, by the, for the love of God because you've invested in the kingdom. Our worship attendance is up. Our children's attendance is blowing up. Did you see them when they walk out of here and, and see what's going on? Our youth attendance is up. Our, our actual attendance in church. Remember I said numbers don't matter? Well, our numbers are pretty cool. We're at a higher number than we've been since 2012, and we're up 5% in worship if the numbers are important to you. But the most powerfully and the most holy figure I can give you is this that we've had 30 professions of faith, 30 people who gave their lives to Christ in this church in the past year. Yeah. Praise God. Now I want to put that in perspective. There's 657 United Methodist churches or thereabout congregations in our conference here in Florida. And of those 657, the Florida Annual Conference, the bishop told us last year, 200 of those churches have not had a profession of faith in the last three years. And we've had 30 in the past year. I would say that we've had an incredible return on investment. Amen? Well, now it's time for us to plan for what God has in store for us in 2017. And if 2016 is any indicator, hold on to your seats, because we're about to take a wild ride. And that's a ride in faith, because we're going to commit and invest in God. Let's see today what that takes and what it means to be invested in God. Will you pray with me? God of grace, God of glory, 
God of everything that we realized in this year. Since January of this year that 30 people have come to know you, Lord, have called you by name and have decided to follow you. We praise your name and give you the glory because we know you made that all possible. May we partner with you today as we consider how we invest in 2017, how we invest not just our money, not just our talents, but our very heart. Give us your wisdom and your way. Block out the things that would miss us hearing your voice today. And let us follow you and be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the very first thing we have to do when we invest in God is trust. You see, let's face it, there's no, uh, there's no formula, there's no expected returns that we can claim. There's nothing that says, if I give $100, I'm going to get $200 back. It doesn't say that in the Bible anywhere, does it? If you serve God, well then, if I serve God, then I should get da-da-da-da. It doesn't say that in the Bible. It would make this Sunday so much easier if it did, wouldn't it? If I could just say, guess what? Here it is. If we think that what we do is going to earn us something, that's not the point. The point is that, that we are following Jesus. And if we don't do it the right way, we'll be like the disciples. We're not the first ones to do this. Listen to what the disciples who, who started to think it was in it, what, what's in it for me? Because that's the underlying thing that comes in our lives every step, every breath along the way. What's in it for me? In Mark 10, 36, two of the disciples asked Jesus to listen. He said, he, they, he said Lord, ask, give us exactly what we asked for. And here's what he said. Jesus said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in God's glory. In other words, let's make a deal, right? But this, this following Jesus doesn't have a prescribed deal. Not a financial gain deal anywhere. I've got to be honest about that. God's plan is is so much more when we invest in God. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. So not what you think is going to happen, right? In all ways, acknowledge God and God will make your straight your paths. So, so we don't do it because we have got it written down. We do it because we trust God. The first thing we have to do is trust. Second thing in investing in God is to be bold. Ecclesiastes 11.1 1 says this, Be generous. Invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Don't hoard your goods. Spread them around. Be a blessing to others. This could be your last night. You know, has anybody here found a way to take your, their money with them? <laughs> I had one dear sweet lady in the first service said, traveler's checks. <laughs> I had no response, so I thought it fair, thought it fair to share. If you think that's going to work, good blessings on you. There, there, there's no way what we give is going to do us any good. What, what we have is not going to be worth anything to us when we die. There's no way, there's no, no plan for that. So do it now. Invest in something not that's going to rust or moths can eat away, but invest in the kingdom. And the more we invest in the kingdom, the more that we invest in bringing the kingdom here on earth, the better off we are. Amen? Amen. So the second step is to be bold. The third step in investing with God is knowing that you are not investing in stuff but in a relationship with Jesus. Matthew 6.21 says, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, there's a difference between what we have 
and what we've been given. I came up with this a couple weeks ago and, and I've been talking about this. It's, when we talk about what we have, we tend to talk about our possessions. We tend to talk about, well, I, I have a nice wardrobe. I have a nice car. I have a house. I have, I have, I have. But that's different from what we've been given. We have been given this relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we've been given that relationship, it means that we've been given the kingdom of God. Now which one's worth more? The haves or what we've been given? But we live and try to hold on to what we have. Sometimes we, we expire our lives trying to get more of what we have. Forgetting completely about what we've been given. Paul Tripp tells us to ask ourselves, what are the things that are valuable to me right now? The things I work to experience every day and am unwilling to live without. How is the return on those investments shaping my relationships? Are the things that, you, that are valuable to you right now developing relationships? Or as I say, my Maserati can't buy me love. It's the closest I'll ever come to use the word Maserati with me. J.H. Jowett wrote this. He said, the real measure of our wealth is how much we would be worth if we lost all of our money. When you take away all the stuff, it is relationship and our relationships that remain. Invest in your relationship with God. And God tells us to invest in our relationship with one another. That's what we have. That can't be taken away from us unless we so choose. Invest in in that relationship with the one who created you and loved you enough to die on a cross. The investment's already been made and made in a big way. But if we continue to live for the haves, Mark 8.36 says, for what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? My personal story, a giving story, is about choices. Once money ruled supreme in my life, I actually thought I couldn't survive without it. One time, I, it's not written here, but my favorite story is the one when, the, when I lost my job and I ran home and canceled my cable. I didn't know what else to do, but I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough money. I thought, well, that money will come in handy, and they never shut my cable off. It was great. <laughs> God provided. <laughs> but, we, but, I, but I really did. I, I, be, I panicked. I actually have still traces of this, Michelle can tell you, in me today that, um, that if I don't have enough money, I start to worry about things. But, but as my relationship has grown with Jesus Christ, as my heart is for Jesus Christ, I have an abundant treasure. It's, uh, I'm already top of the heap in Jesus' eyes. I already have all that I need. Michelle and I give, by all means, and, and sometimes we give beyond our means, quite honestly. But I've never been at a loss because it has brought me much closer to Jesus to do that. I lay down my money, my former treasure, at the foot of the cross and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I just have to tell you, I love to give to First Church. I love to give because I love this relationship I have with Jesus and that money does not have a hold on me. It doesn't require me to do anything. I, no part of it matters because my Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Creator, is abundance and gives me all that I need even when I don't know it and that's what I count on when I give 2 Timothy 1 in verses 12 through 14 says this 
And for this reason, I suffer as I do. I have 167,000 miles on my van. <laughs> but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. Did you hear that? I know the one in who I've put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until the day that I've entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you've heard from him, me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure. The good treasure. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Rosie McDowell shared a thing on Facebook. She said, find your worth in Jesus, not in things of the world. Man, that said it all. I should have just had Rosie come up here and post that and be done. That says it all. But here's the thing. The greatest investment you can make, the greatest investment in the kingdom is your heart. I've got a deal for you. If you follow Jesus, your dividend is the kingdom of God. You gain the Holy Spirit living in you. As we look around and see the dust settle from the elections. <laughs> I wrote this before the elections were over, but I said, it is with joy that we realize this world is not ours. <laughs> John 17, 16 says, They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. The thing about the elections, remember what I said last week? I said 45 to 46 percent of us were going to be unhappy. But it's more important than that, is that we need to be the church now more than ever regardless of who was elected remember Jesus is our king amen and there's going to be battles I'm not a prophet I'm a realist there are going to be battles but the battle has already been won and the battle is Jesus's we walk with Jesus Here's the thing about our giving. Studies show that Christians now have more money at their disposal than any time in human history. But they are proportionately invested less than any time in history. What has made the difference at First Church is we've had consistently had people investing in the kingdom. That annual inv investment has an eternal return. I want to tell you, if you are been here less than nine years, you don't know how close we were. Nine years ago, we weren't sure we'd, we would be able to make it. This, the doors of this church could have just as easily been closed as the gospel going out as it does today. But people invested in the kingdom. People believed that God wasn't done with us yet. And, it, and we've turned that around. But hear this. It wasn't us. It was turned around by the grace of God. Amen? And so it's been a partnership. It's been this, I'll step towards God and God steps towards me in our individual lives. And I want to tell you as a church, that's what 2016 is about. We took a chance. We stepped towards Jesus Christ in faith. And God resounded in response. People realized that we're not here to put on a show, to be good Christians. We're here to follow our Lord and Savior. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6 says this, As we work together with Him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on the day of salvation, I've helped you. See, now is an acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. 
And it's time for us to invest in 2017. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what God does. Last year, we talked about buying a bank, or at the beginning of this year, we talked about buying a bank, and, and eventually I felt like God was leading us that direction, and look what happened. We bought a bank. I feel that God has an incredible plan for this coming year as well. I see, in my understanding of what I see us doing in 2017, I see the youth house becoming not the youth house, but finally becoming our nursery for our children. So new parents that come here have an, have an understanding that this church cares about their babies, that they care about these infants. And I see just behind that where the administration building is now is a brand new building building just for our children because it's time to invest in our children after they come out of that nursery to be with Miss Susie and as they parade out the door right now they do so and they go into somebody else's space but next year I see them having their own space and then I look over at the kayak and I see this kind of worn out used to be our sanctuary we let it go new place for our youth that says you know what I'm proud to be a youth of first church because look at the beautiful place that they made for us because we invested in our youth. We've invested in our children. We've invested in our infants, our babies. That's what God's calling us to do. And God's calling us even in here. I believe, and we already talked about it, I think there's going to be two screens up here and the cross of Jesus Christ is going to show every Sunday right there. That's what I understand to be the vision for 2017. Kind of scary, aren't I? <laughs> God is able to do these things if we invest in Him. And most important... I see another 30 or 40 or 100 people giving their lives to Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the vision God has for this community and this body of Christ. When I think of all that's changed and, and all that Jesus has done in my life, when I look at what God has done at First Church just in the last year alone, Paul speaks for me and I hope for all of us in Philippians 1 or in Philippians 3 when he says, Yet whatever gains I had, these I've come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord. Invest in God and the return on investment is forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.